Hi there, this is Julie Deering of Seed World, and today we are continuing our Insider Podcast with Jason Cabe, Director of Business Development for KSI. We've been focused on the theme of transparency, and today we are going to take a look at the seed wheel. While it was innovative for its time, it's rudimentary for today's technology. So we'll be asking the questions, what do we need to be aware of? What are the advantages of the seed wheel as well as what are the limitations? So uh, thanks so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the conversation. So Jason, thanks so much for sitting down with me today. And uh, um, we last were talking about just transparency and uh, where things are in the industry and, and why it's important. Um, one of the things that in previous conversations had come up was uh, the seed wheel accuracy or the accuracy of the seed wheel and how much uh, we can trust it and uh, um, maybe what people need to be doing a little bit differently. So I guess first tell me where the seed wheel comes in and what role it plays. Yep. So thanks for having me back. First of all, it's it's good to be back and um, looking forward to a conversation here. Um, so seed wheel, there is there's a lot of history um, in the seed treatment world, downstream seed treatment world to the seed wheel. There's um, there's many multiple ways to meter seed, which is a vital vital part to accuracy on a continuous flow seed treater. So you, we kind of have to back up a little bit into just talk about continuous flow treating and what that actually means. So um, when, we're, when we're continuously treating seed, um, we're trying to take a known amount of seed and apply the right amount of product, so many, um, the application rate by label of that product onto the seed. And so in order to do that, we have to know, and we're doing this continuously, so the seed doesn't go into a batch treater, holds it, while we dump in the treatment and we mix it, the seed is continually flowing through this treater and we're continuously pumping treatment onto the seed. And so we need to be able to take those together and do that correctly. And in order to do that, we need to know the real rate, the, the live rate of seed that's flowing through the treater. And that could be in pounds per minute or units per minute. It could be whatever reading we want, but we have to know and we have to have confidence that that rate is the real rate that the seed is going through the treater. Um, and then that drives the pumps. So for example, if we if we tell the, the system or if we program or calibrate our pumps to apply a certain rate of product, we're, we're depending upon the seed treatment being consistent. So if we tell the treater um, or if we calibrate our pumps to a thousand pounds per minute of seed flowing through the treater, that thousand pounds per minute needs to be a thousand pounds per minute. If that changes between a thousand to 1200 to 800 pounds per minute and our pumps don't know that we're going to be applying an inaccurate amount of seed treatment. And so when we think about continuous treating, this seed metering device, uh, the seed wheel um, has been, and was um, kind of the first downstream uh, widespread way to measure and meter seed as it goes through the treater. Um, the way it works is it has, it's just, it's a wheel or a, <clears throat> a device that has cups on it, so to speak, that the seed wheel turns either horizontally or vertically. And every revolution that that, that that seed wheel makes, the system through a calibration that the user does can assume that the seed wheel dumped X amount of seed. So for example, if the motor turns, if the seed wheel turns 10 times, we can take that 10 times, multiply that by the amount of cups that discharged and the amount of revelations, and we know that it discharged that many pounds of seed into the treater, and then we calibrate our pumps accordingly. Um, before the seed wheel, that was measured with just a with manually opening a gate um, to so many inches or to some set point, and you would take a stopwatch and you would measure so many pounds of seed going through the treater. You'd start it and you'd stop it when the when the seed was empty, and you would say that the seed is flowing through at that rate, so many pounds per minute, and then you calibrate your pumps. The seed will allow allowed the industry to be able to adjust the rate or to get that rate without using a stopwatch and be able to take um, and program into the, into the system a calibration number that just basically came from weighing a known volume of seed on a scale and saying this known volume weighs 900 grams 
And so I can count, I can take that and I can program that in. And now I know that every revolution on the seed wheel is going to deliver so many grams or pounds of seed. That's kind of how the seed wheel works. And um, it did bring, there was, it definitely brought a, it, it was definitely a, a step forward for the industry because it took these manual systems with no seed flow and no way to consistently verify the seed flow rate and took them up to a notch where we had a we had at least a system in place. We had a piece of equipment that could get be somewhat reliable as long as the user calibrated correctly, as long as the pockets were remaining full, those types of things that I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about limitations. Um, but it definitely brought a, a level of accuracy to the downstream seed treatment um, marketplace that was beforehand not possible. So that's a good thing. What, uh, what about where we are today? I mean, what, what can go wrong in trusting your seed wheel and just going with what is there? So um, when, we, when we think about today and where we are and what kind of technology, so the, the seed wheel, um, you know, the seed wheel was developed and, and um, introduced in mid 2000s, you know, and, and as with most things, tech, new technology becomes available and there's been improvements to, not necessarily improvements to the seed wheel, but there've been improvements to the system surrounding the seed wheel. But there's also been new ways to meter and measure seed. Um, and so when we think about technology that's available today versus technology that was available 15 years ago, um, there is definitely some advances. And so, you know, there's, when we talk about thousands of seed treaters delivered in the marketplace and all of these seed treaters and the message that was pushed out 15 years ago about the seed wheel being the way to meter seed and the best way to meter seed or the only way to meter seed. Um, that's something that is really, really ingrained into the way that this industry thinks. And so whenever there's maybe a different way or potentially a better way, a lot of, a lot of times we revert back to what we were first told, which is the seed wheel is the way to go. And so what happens is, is we miss out maybe sometimes on um, a better approach to metering seed that is more reliable, more consistent, gives us more ability to monitor real-time accuracy, those types of things. And so um, when we think about what those are and what some of the limitations are around the seed wheel, um, there is a, there's a level of uh, running blind that happens with the seed wheel. And, and we can talk about examples of what that actually looks like. But ultimately, again, we're, we're depending upon the user taking doing the calibration every time for every different seed size, for every different seed variety, and actually inputting that into the system. As soon as they don't do that, the seed will lose its ability to be accurate. Um, we also, like I mentioned, are, are, are um, relying on the seed wheel um, to run properly from the standpoint that all of the cups need to be filled consistently as it makes its revolution. And if that doesn't happen, we're basically saying, we're thinking that the system is delivering an X amount of seed, when in reality, it may only be 80% of that. And, and when I say we're, we're running blind, it's because there really isn't a baseline. There is nothing to compare that to, um, especially when there is no other measuring system um, in place. So, and seed treatment with a bulk seed system, many times there's a scale in place, a legal for trade scale, that weighs and delivers seed and prints a, a delivery ticket that is an actual amount of seed. And um, when we think about that, we know that that is an amount of seed that we can trust because it's a verified legal for trade. State comes in every year, every couple of years, verifies, you have to get it calibrated all the time, that you know that's a correct amount of seed. Um, and so you can, that, that amount of seed, that weight that that get tells you, that is a verifiable, accurate, you can go to the bank with that number. The seed wheel, a lot can go wrong and a lot can go wrong pretty fast. If your operator's not doing their thing or if the, if the seed wheel or if a bag um, sits down on top of the seed wheel and plugs up the pocket and so it just keeps you from filling those up, um, but it continues to run, um, you will have no way of knowing that until it's too late. And so when we think about the limitations, we have to remember that the seed wheel is just a motor it's just a seed wheel that's running and turning, and there's no sense. There's a there's a sensor to know if there's seed above the seed wheel, but that's the extent of it. If the sensor sees thinks it sees seed and there's no seed there, it's going to continue to turn, and it thinks that it's delivering 
hundred percent of the product that it's telling you. When in reality, the only way to really know that that's the case is if you can compare that to a bag tag that you got from your seed company or a legal for trade scale that is in place for maybe some other reason, unlike seed delivery. I was going to ask you, uh, but I think you covered it really good, but to, um, like, what can go wrong with a seed wheel? Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, and so I kind of, I use the example a little bit of a, of a bag falling down on top of a seed wheel. And this is, this is um, not just a hypothetical scenario. It's something that we deal with regularly. Um, you know, just as, as a, uh, as a manufacturer for uh, that, you know, supports equipment, not just KSI equipment, but all equipment. You know, we take phone calls all year long and many of the systems we support have a seed well. And so we'll, we'll pick up the phone and we'll um, be troubleshooting something in regards to accuracy around seed treatment. And we'll end up finding out that um, the, everything is running correctly. All the motors are turning, nothing's faulting out, but yet we find a a uh, broken piece of uh, plastic box sitting above the seed wheel, or we find a dead animal sitting above the seed wheel that's plugging it up. And the system doesn't know because it doesn't actually care as long as the motor's turning and as long as our sensor sees something. And in reality, what it's seeing is part of a dead animal. And the seed wheel doesn't know that. And so those are things that can happen. And so you can run, you know, you, and you can have units of treatment go into your system without, with very little seed, and there's no way to val validate that unless the user actually lays eyes on something that's incorrect. So the seed wheel was revolutionary at its time, but is now somewhat rudimentary um, because of other technologies that have come along or that can accompany that mm -hmm. and just help to validate where we are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, you know, and I don't, there, there's still a place for seed wheels because there's certain, there's certain situations and configure site configurations that, um, that really need to be set up with that in mind. Um, but there are, I would, there, there are definitely ways to meter seed that are more reliable mm -hmm. and more consistent and more flexible at the same time to give the user some tools that a seed wheel can't. Um, but the, the key is in, in those situations when you need to use a seed wheel, that the operator understands these limitations so that they can be aware of them, so that they can make, that they can understand the importance of seed wheel calibration and they don't just assume, oh, just because I have a seed wheel there that I'm good and that I don't have to think about it or touch it and that I can, you know, take the data that it's telling me and just run with it. Because just because the seed wheel is telling me that I, just because I have a, a seed wheel and my system tells me I have 100% accuracy at the end of the day, that doesn't really mean anything unless you're taking the amount of seed and from an outside source, like a scale, like a bag tag, and calculating that yourself outside of the system and reporting on that for accuracy. But the seed wheel in and of itself is not enough, doesn't give you enough information to be able to make that determination. And so this all comes back to the issue of transparency and being able to um, give your <coughs> retailer um, the information in terms of what has been applied and to be able to accurately trust that. Yeah. And it, yeah, so yeah, back to, you know, we kind of um, want to make sure that we're talking about how to help and how to, you know, be transparent with our equipment. And, and like I said, when whenever you have a piece of equipment that you can't really trust in and of itself what it's actually doing, which in the case of a seed wheel is true, um, it's hard to, to really say I'm being fully transparent with what I'm giving you if that's the only piece of information that I'm using by itself. So what, so what if there's somebody that has a system in place and the seed wheel is their only um, mechanism for measuring? What's your advice or what are you telling people to do in that case? Yeah, and, and so in that case, the first thing we would try to do is we would do one of two things. We would either make, if there, is there any way possible to get a seed scale in where we can actually run the seed through a legal for trade scale that gives us a amount of seed that we can actually trust. If we can get that in place, we don't have, we can, we can have a system that we can be completely transparent and report accuracy on and know that what we're doing is correct because we take what the scale says, let's say we delivered a thousand pounds of seed and we, we compare what the scale says compared to what the, what the pumps actually deliver on the liquid. And we use those as telling the accuracy story. 
we basically use the seed wheel to meter the seed, but at the end of the day, it doesn't have anything to do with our accuracy because we don't really care what it says we did. We care about what the scale measured and what the pumps measured. And that's how we tell the story. So if we can, can get a scale in place, we can be confident in our accuracy. So that's step one. The next step would be put a scale in place and then actually um, use a different seed metering um, device that maybe uses more, that, that would use a, a gravimetric approach to metering seed. So up, uh, seed metering is done in pounds per minute, generally speaking, or units per minute, which can be equated back to pounds per minute. We're basically saying we're going to deliver so many pounds of seed through the treater over the over a course of time. And so with a scale, we can eliminate the seed wheel entirely and, and, and use loss and weight rate of change off of the scale. And then we can say, okay, so the scale is delivering so many pounds per second, calculate that over out and, and actually tell the pumps that we're actually delivering so many pounds per, per second or pounds per minute of seed and the pumps will respond accordingly. And there's a lot of advantages and a lot of visibility that goes into having that real-time accuracy. Because again, if we go back to the example with the seed wheel where a dead animal or a broken box or a bag gets in above the seed wheel, we don't know. If that happens with a scale and it plugs up the opening, of the discharge of our scale, our flow rate may drop from a thousand pounds per minute to 300 pounds per minute because it's restricting the flow. But unlike a seed wheel, we actually know that because we're seeing the real change off the scale. And so two things will happen. One, the pumps will slow down to try and match the rate of change, the new rate of change. Or two, if they can't slow down fast enough, the system will fault out and keep you from operating inaccurately. And with a seed wheel, you do not have that luxury or that ability. You're just going to run until the operator says something's wrong and they'll push the pause button or the emergency stop button and then get on the phone and troubleshoot it. With loss and weight or with the KSI variate system, we have that real time visibility that lets us know any moment in time what's actually happening and take that snapshot to the bank and, and, and say, um, you know, to our customers that I'm not just mass balance giving you a thousand units of seed and hundred ounces of product or 500 ounces of product, but I can, I can actually go back and I can slice and dice every single one of my runs and say, at this given time, this given moment during this run, your seed was doing this and your liquid was doing this. And we put this together through a seed treater. So it's not even just about transparency to the customer. It's transparency within your own team and your operators so they have better control. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point. I mean, when we think about being able to fine tune your system, you have to be able to have information to be able to do that. You can't just make changes to your system if you don't have any clue what's going on. And so, yeah, being able to have information for yourself lets you trust for your own sake, this said 102%, this said 100%, can I even trust that? And that's an important part for sure. All right. Well, thanks so much again. I appreciate your time today and we look forward to catching up with you at the next episode. Yep, my pleasure. Well, that's it for today's Insider Podcast with Jason Cabe. Thanks for listening. It's our hope that you found this information not only insightful, but also of value. This is Julie Deering signing off.